The season finale of the Chicago Bears on Hard Knocks finally gave us some of the goods. Some Valus Jones trade talk, a Chicago Bears depth chart revealed, and some really cool moments of Ryan Poles getting emotional during roster cutdowns. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at Cox Sports One. You can follow the podcast at Locked On Bears on all of your favorite social media platforms, including the Locked On Bears YouTube channel, where you can keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On the show today, we recap the final episode of the Chicago Bears on HBO's Hard Knocks, starting with the big Bayless Jones storylines paying off here. We get to learn more about how strongly the Chicago Bears coaching staff has felt about Jones throughout this process, where they see his role on this roster in multiple spots, and kind of a surprise storyline, the Bears getting some calls, or at least a call, inquiring about trading for Bayless Jones and Ryan Poles talking through some of that thought process for the team. Then we'll go through the start of the episode. We got a shot of the Bears depth chart. They blurred it out, but one of my favorite things to do is read through the blurs and get some real answers here to how the Bears feel about some of their players. So we'll take away from some of the lessons we could see throughout HBO trying to blur it out, but giving us a little more access than maybe the Bears might have wanted overall. And then we'll wrap up with some of the other interesting tidbits from the episode. Some really cool emotional moments from, from Ryan Poles with guys like Adrian Colbert. Some stuff about the backup quarterbacks. Uh, some cool spots with Jalen Johnson and Roma Dunze, Montez Sweat and Austin Booker, DJ Moore as well. But the big story of the episode was about Bayless Jones and how the Chicago Bears very much see Bayless Jones as a running back. Even on this regular season roster, he's going to play a role in that running back room. And, and they really confirmed that because they, when they cut to the clip of them telling wide receiver Colin Johnson that they were going to release him, Ryan Pulse told them, hey, you know, we, we want to keep you on the team, but we're only going to keep five receivers. I think he said, we're going with five at the receiver position. And if you count the wide receivers, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, Tyler Scott, DeAndre Carter, that's five wide receivers. That doesn't include Bayless Jones, who made the roster and is, spoiler alert, on their running back depth chart on the wall in Ryan Poles' office. But throughout the episode, we saw Chicago Bears coaches go to bat for Bayless Jones. That when they had the big team staff meeting where they're talking about guys on the bubble, you know, the running backs coach, said, you know, I'm, I'm going to fight for Velas more than anybody. He's he's too explosive for us to let go. And he made, like Chad Morton kept saying, you know, he made really big strides at practice. And then, you know, they'd cut to special teams coordinator Richard Hightower, who says, you know, Brian Poles asked him, he was like, Hightower, where do you see Velas on special teams? He goes, well, see him as the kick returner. I see him as anywhere on, you know, the kickoff coverage team he can run down and tackle. I see him on the punt return team, like as one of the blockers, either inside or out. And then, you know, he's the first guy off the bench at gunner, depending on the cornerback health. He said he could be a gunner on the punt coverage team. So to them, this is a four phase special teams player. And even Matt Eberflus said, like, they still see Valus Jones as a potential game changer in certain spots. Like they, they have these high hopes for this player that hasn't done a lot of that up to this point. And I think we're all sort of looking around, waiting for that to actually happen. But the Hard Knocks definitely showed how strong of a conviction the Bears have for this former third round pick because they revealed that the Bears got at least a trade call from another team. We don't know which team asking about trading for Bayless Jones and Ryan Poles said flatly, like I, I got I'm going to draw a line here and say, 
I'm not going to take anything less than a fourth round pick for Valus Jones. Like he's like, you know, it could be good value for us or whatever, but it doesn't make sense for the Bears right now unless we got really good value. You know, trading a, a third round pick who hasn't done much for a fourth round pick would be a pretty good it's not a good ROI, but like a pretty good salvage of of a player who hasn't done much else up to this point. But Paul said like he's playing a new position. He looks good. Our, you know, running backs coach has invested a lot of time and energy in him. Of course, mentioned the special teams as well. Like he they just felt like he was too valuable to take anything less than a fourth. I would imagine that call was another team calling to say, hey, if you're going to cut this guy, instead of cutting him, we'll give you a draft pick to take him instead so he doesn't go on waiver wires and let every team have the access to to try and claim him or, or end up signing him as a free agent. Much like the Bears did when they traded for Daryl Ta- Darryl Taylor or the defensive lineman Chris Williams. You know, they called to say, hey, we'll give you a draft pick instead of the guy you were going to cut anyway. I imagine this was a team calling the Bears saying, hey, yeah, if you're going to cut him, we'll give you a draft pick for him. And Paul said, well, not so fast. We're not going to cut him, and it's going to take a fourth-round pick if you want to pry him out from us. And I, I imagine the other team goes, oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't, didn't, mean to, didn't mean to bother you. Just wanted to call and, and check in on a potential uh, distressed asset to, to pick up there. But you know, they, they showed a scene in the running back's room where running back's coach Chad Morton was, was telling Bayless Jones that he made the team and, and, and talking to him, coaching him up and saying, like, you know, that he was proud of how he handled the transition that, you know, it wasn't that he wasn't good enough at wide receiver and that we had to find some other place for you, but it's that they saw something special in him at running back. He said, we already know you can play wide receiver, but there's things you do at running back that other guys can't do. And I can't help but wonder how honest and like 100% forthcoming that was. Do the Bears really believe Bayless Jones can play wide receiver and that it wasn't that he wasn't good enough at wide receiver or do they just tell him that because you want to build a player's confidence and yeah, they want to keep him on the team because he's a good special teams player and has some running back upside. But like you didn't have to, I mean, I don't don't know if they truly honestly believe if they know he could play wide receiver at a high level. I don't know that they would have moved him over to to running back because they would just keep him at receiver and they wouldn't have drafted Roman Unze and traded for Keenan Allen and drafted Tyler Scott last year. They really had that much faith in Bayless Jones as a wide receiver. Like that to me felt like a coach telling his, his player some things that he wants to hear to keep his confidence up, to boost his confidence and help him be the best player he can be. And that's fine. Like this is not me criticizing the running backs coach. I just don't believe him fully. And I, I think Bayless Jones does and Bayless Jones should. And that's the point. And, and coaching is a part of that. And right. Like trying to build up a guy is an important part of the job. I just don't fully buy that. Like, oh yeah. It wasn't that we trust you at wide receiver and it wasn't that you weren't good enough there. We just think you can be extra good here. And I, I think it's true that they see a lot of potential in him at running back. I'm not sure that the selling point of, yeah, we also know you can play wide receiver. I think if he hadn't switched to running back, he might not have made this 53-man roster at this point because based on how the Bears were looking at this depth chart and trying to figure out their final 53 players, they had some other options at receiver that they might have kept over him. And obviously they have other running backs on the team as well. Like this was about his special teams more than anything else. And he'll get some carries and some snaps on offense here and there, but he's on the bears mostly for his special teams. And if it was just a wide receiver, I don't know exactly how likely it is that he's still on this team, but the bears have all this faith in him and Ryan Poles turned down a potential trade for less than a fourth round pick that he wasn't willing to take. So Bayless Jones still held in high regard in this organization, and we'll see if this season can produce something a little bit more from him than we've seen elsewhere in the past. But we got a better sense of some of these tight roster decisions based on a depth chart that they put on screen during the Hard Knocks episode. They blurred it out, but not perfectly. And you can kind of tell based on some clues throughout it how the Bears feel about certain players across their roster. So we'll go through what we learned from a blurry Bears depth chart on Hard Knocks next on Locked on Bears. This episode of Locked on Bears is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. And what makes it America's number one sportsbook is they always have something fresh for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. 
Just bet $5 on anything. You can bet on Caleb Williams' passing yards and whether he'll lead all rookies in passing yards, the over-under on his passing yards, offensive rookie of the year odds, week one lines for Bears versus Titans with the Bears favored by four and a half in that matchup, and so much more. Baseball, soccer, tennis, combat sports, any, any sports that are on TV right now, you can bet them at FanDuel. So to get your free three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket, just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. Hard Knocks has done a really good job this season of editing and scrubbing and cutting around things to make sure they don't reveal almost anything to us about how the Bears actually feel about players especially in, in more negative lights. We get, a, we get, we get coaches and GMs and, and executives praising players and telling players good things, but we don't get a lot of like comparing two guys and who's slightly ahead of the other or how they see this roster stacking up. Usually, you know, we'll get Ryan Poles asks the question, but then they'll cut before, he, before anybody gives the answer, but it tells you that, hey, here's kind of the conversations they were having. Or in a lot of cases, you know, they'll show a meeting room and, and something on the projector or something on the wall, but they blur it out so that you can't see the names or the order that the players are in or, and glean a lot of that information that, you know, maybe someone might consider a competitive advantage. I think that's pretty debatable and a lazy excuse, but teams do consider it a competitive advantage that I don't think ultimately actually exists. If you just pay attention to the team and what they do, that is, this stuff isn't always that hard to figure out on your own on the outside. But one of the things the bear or the hard knocks blurred in this final episode was the depth chart as Ryan Poles was going through his 53-man roster evaluations with Matt Eberflus and Ian Cunningham and uh, their direct, another one of their front office people. And it's blurred, but I feel like you can see enough to really get a sense of how the Bears are feeling about different spots on their roster. So, like, if you look closely, there's a, there's a few different, like, frames of it in the opening scene of the of the episode, you know, they've got every position kind of stacked vertically, you know, offensive tackle, offensive guard, center guard, tackle, tight end, you know, two outside receivers plus a slot receiver, fullback, quarterback, running back, and every position on both sides of the ball is stacked up. They didn't blur out the positions, just like the actual like two letter designation for what each position is, but they blurred out all the name cards underneath each position. So you can't, you can't clearly read any name or any detail on any of the cards. But there's enough context clues here, plus a few other shots where they get you a closer view that's still blurred out, but is a, it, because you're a little bit closer, you can kind of tell more the length of last names and the size of letters and the colors and some different designations on here that I think give us a good sense of, I, I pieced together pretty much the entirety of the depth chart. The one caveat here is that there's, as they go through the different shots, and you can, if you go back and watch the episode, the depth chart actually changes a little bit depending on where they were cutting. So like, obviously the bears were talking through like, okay, if we keep this player here and that player there as like the, if they're, as they're trying to get to their 53. And so there's actually a few different versions of the depth chart as they were experimenting with some different combinations on which players they would keep, which also tells us something. But some of the big takeaways I want to go through here. First of all, the running back depth chart, every time they showed it on the screen, it always had four cards by it. And so at first you're like, well, wait a minute. Does that mean Valus Jones with the wide receivers? No, it, it always showed five wide receivers and four running backs. But the Bears ended up keeping five running backs and five wide receivers. Travis Homer making the team as sort of the fifth running back there. But in every shot, especially the ones where they zoom up close on the running back column, you can really tell that the first name is short and it's DeAndre Swift. The second name is the longest. It's R. Johnson. The third name is kind of in the middle. It's K. Herbert. Even though you can't read it, you can just kind of you can tell based on the length. And then the last name is like it. The, or the, the fourth name on the stack is like a shorter last name, and then a tiny space, and then a couple more letters, which is V. Jones Jr. So clearly, as they were going through this fifty-three man roster position. Those four running backs were pretty well locked in and locked in in that order. Roshan Johnson ahead of Khalil Herbert in the Bears' eyes, and then Bayless Jones, number four, ahead of Travis Homer. And it was trying to figure out w whether to keep Travis Homer as the fifth running back or let Travis Homer go was part of the conversation as the Bears were moving through these different positions. Because in a couple of those different screens, they had a sixth wide receiver, 
They had a fourth tight end in some of those screens as well. They they had even done a couple of things where like they took Karan Amagaji's card. I can tell it's Karan Amagaji's card and like tilted it sideways the same, same way they had the fourth tight ends card tilted sideways. So I wonder if you know, they were considering an injured reserve kind of red shirt season for him or whether they would think about moving him out. But the way that I, the, the thing that I end up taking away is that like a couple of the cards, like each card is a different design, a de- different color of the background. And when you look at that, when you look at the, the depth chart, almost every card is white. And then there's a handful of cards that are blue. The top quarterback is blue. The punter is blue. One of your top wide receivers is blue. One of your defensive ends is blue. And one of your tackles is blue. That tells me those are all the rookies that the Bears drafted. Okay, the Williams, Crown, Nagashi, those cards are all blue. So those are pretty easy to pick out either way. Then there's a few cards that are purple. And the purple cards don't really make it on the screen much. But in a couple shots, there's a, there's a purple card added to the end of the wide receiver column. And there's a purple card ended, added to the end of the tight end column. Those, my, my theory there, I don't know what the purple designation means. Blue is obviously a rookie that the Bears drafted. I think purple cards are undrafted free agents, like undrafted rookie players that the Bears added. And the fact that they were toggling them on and off the board tells me that I suspect Colin Johnson almost made this 53-man roster as the sixth wide receiver. There was one purple card that was added on at the wide receiver position, and I have to imagine out of all the undrafted rookie wide receivers, it was going to be him and not John Jackson or Peter LeBlanc. So I, I think Colin Johnson was right there in this mix with him and Travis Homer, who wasn't always on the screen. And then the fourth tight end would be Brandon Bates, the undrafted rookie who ended up getting claimed by the New York Jets on waivers. I think the Bears came pretty close to keeping him on the 53-man roster. And I would imagine, as they're trying to decide, okay, do I keep the sixth wide receiver, the fourth tight end, or the fifth running back in Travis Homer, that comes down to special teams. And Homer is the best special teams player out of those three guys. So he makes the roster and the two undrafted rookie free agents get released with the hope of putting them on the practice squad. One makes it, one does not. A couple other quick notes there. Uh, the backup offensive line has Karana Magaji as the backup right tackle and Matt Pryor as the backup left tackle with Bill Murray as the backup left guard and Ryan Bates as both the backup center and backup right guard. That might just be the case of like, all right, you got two different backup offensive tackles, so you got to put one on each side. But it's worth noting that, like, Pryor is specifically behind the right tackle, or excuse me, behind the left tackle. It's Braxton Jones and Matt Pryor are the two left tackle spots. And then the right tackle spots are Darnell Wright and Karan Amagaji. We've been thinking of Amagaji more as a left tackle. He's played mostly the left side in college, but they viewed him there as, as the right tackle, so that's something to keep in mind. Like, if there's an injury, will they follow that exactly, or will Pryor be the swing tackle no matter what? That's something I want to keep an eye on. And then at defensive a defensive end, your starters were listed Montez Sweat and Demarcus Walker. And then your backups were Austin Booker and Daryl Taylor. And then clearly your third strings were Dominique Robinson and Daniel Hardy. So like Booker and Taylor are your top backup defensive ends. Hardy and Robinson are your third stringers. So don't, don't expect to see a lot of Dominique Robinson or Daniel Hardy early on because Booker and Taylor are going to be the first guys off the bench on that defensive line. All of that from a super blurry depth chart where when they cut to closer views, you can see the last, the last name Robinson on the defensive end card. It's the longest name on the defensive end cards. Uh, that's obviously Robinson. And the blue is obviously the rookie is obviously Booker in that spot. And then Daryl Taylor didn't have a card. They wrote it in, in marker on the whiteboard and wrote in Daryl Taylor because they had traded for him and didn't have a card for him. Same thing they did with Chris Williams on the defensive tackle spot there. So, and by the way, they had Chris Williams, the defensive tackle, as the backup nose tackle with Zach Pickens designated as the backup defensive tackle behind Dexter. So maybe we'll see Dexter and Pickens play more of the same position as opposed to Pickens playing more of the nose tackle like we've seen in the past. That's what we gleaned from this Bears depth chart. I think I could pretty well tell you top to bottom how every position Ryan Poles had the depth chart stacked on his wall there. The corners were how you expected. The safeties were how you expected. The linebackers were how you expected. But, I mean, everything else there we pretty well went through. So... Cool that we got to pull some cool information from something that we weren't really supposed to be able to see clearly, but we can use deductive reasoning. This is one of my favorite things to do is like dig into blurry screenshots from Bears video productions and try and fight through the blur to get some real information out from underneath them. I, I loved, spent like a half hour, 45 minutes, like Zapruder filming this and like trying to, you know, draw strings on the whiteboard and figure out who the, who the real killer is here or who the real depth chart is for the Bears. Not the only tidbit we got from this season finale of Hard Knocks, though. I want to go through... Some of the other cool moments, the emotion from Ryan Poles, some stuff with the 
third and fourth string quarterbacks, Brett Rippon and Austin Reed, how the quarterbacks coach felt about that stuff. A couple of spots of a chronological breakdown from Hard Knocks where they showed some clips out of order that you can kind of spot if you watch closely and a bunch more cool stuff with Jalen Johnson, Montez Sweat, DJ Moore, and more all next on Locked on Bears. This episode of Locked on Bears is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. We're talking LED headlights, roof racks, exhaust kits, superchargers, and more. So whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your vehicle, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Besides some depth chart nuggets, We also just got like some of the cool hard knocks moments that we've been building up towards and really waiting for this season. The the real headliner here was Ryan Poles getting legitimately like emotional when having to break the news to backup safety Adrian Colbert that they were going to cut him. And I thought hard knocks did a good job of presenting this where they showed four or five different players of the Bears, of Eberflus and Poles meeting with players. They met with, actually wrote them down in order, uh, Byron Cowart, the defensive tackle, giving the, hey, you know, we're keeping six defensive ends, so we just don't have room for your defensive tackle. All right, hey, thanks for being here. Wide receiver Colin Johnson, hey, you know, we're keeping five at wide receiver. You were in the conversation for the 53, but the injury and stuff, we want you back in the practice squad. No worries. Offensive tackle Jake Curhan, offensive lineman Theo Benedict. Like, they went through four or five of these guys where, you know, it's, it's professional and it's cordial and it's like, hey, listen, like, Sorry to let you go, but you know just these X, Y, or Z reasons. I hope you understand. Like, thank you for being here. Thanks for all your work. And then we get to Adrian Colbert, and the tone changes, the energy changes. Colbert walks in, and everyone else with Ryan Poles, it's a handshake. It's hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Adrian Colbert walks in barefoot, I should mention, and gives Ryan Poles a big hug. They exchange the only player out of the clips that he actually like hugged. And after he hugs. Ryan Poles like walks back to his seat and then like gets up and kind of walks over and like he's leaving the room and you can see him. He he actually does wipe. Te- he's wiping tears from his eyes. He actually does that a couple of times during this process. And that's the moment, you know, it's like, whoa, like this is this is real. Like this is really real. This isn't, this isn't him acting on camera or whatever. Like this is human to human tough thing for Poles to do. And Ryan Poles said, like told him there's something about you that's different. He described it as like a spirit thing that he's just rooting for his success and really, really, really hates to let him go. And Colbert responded, was very, you know, professional and cordial about it and, you know, felt right back about polls. Like he talked about how like the Bears are his favorite organization. He said, this organization allowed me to be me. I didn't have to come here and conform to some ideal of of what I'm, how I'm supposed to act or what, you know, safety is supposed to do. Like I was just allowed to be me and that helped me thrive on and off the field, and he will always appreciate that as well. And that was just a really cool, touching, tear-jerking kind of moment behind the scenes. It shows Ryan Poles' character. It shows Adrian Colbert's character as well. Like I I thought that was just the good stuff that we always want to see from Hard Knocks. The only thing I was left questioning afterwards is, okay, Ryan Poles clearly feels really strongly about Adrian Colbert, loves him thinks he's something special. And first of all, okay, then if you love him so much, why'd you cut him? But fair enough, he's making the decision that's right for the football team and not what he wants, but but what he, what he and his staff think is right for the football team, which is a good thing, right? If you had a GM who says, I just really like this guy, so we're going to keep him because I'm in charge and and you don't get to, I get to decide who we keep and I'm putting my foot down and we're going to keep this guy. Like, it's good that Ryan Poles can have this emotional attachment to a player and also realize that, It's not just his decision and that he can step back from it and say, yes, I really like this human being, but need to do something different for our football team. That's, that's 
That's good. That's a good thing. But I'm stuck. The, th- the one thing I'm stuck on here is that, okay, if you love Adrian Colbert so much, and it was such a pain to keep him off of this 53-man roster, why isn't he on the practice squad? You know, like, you're allowed to keep veteran players on the practice squad, and the Bears kept a different veteran safety instead, Tervarius Moore, but didn't keep Adrian Colbert on the practice squad. And I thought that was an interesting way to go about this. Like, are the, like, because obviously the feelings from Ryan Poles are genuine. So it's not like he was, again, like making it up or putting it on for the camera. But it just struck me that, like, even on the initial practice squad, they had two safeties, Quindell Johnson and Tarvarius Moore. Like, they kept two safeties in the practice squad that weren't Adrian Colbert. So, like, uh, the only explanation I can come up with is that, like, Colbert was behind both of those guys. And so he never actually stood a chance at making the 53-man roster. But that doesn't mean Ryan Poles didn't have strong feelings about him anyway. Like, that's, that's the best takeaway I can come away with here. It just felt just felt odd to me that, like, hey, like, you're it's like, hey, you're special. We love you. Your energy is different. I really wish I didn't have to do this. But also, like, sorry, we don't have room for you on the practice squad. Like, I, I don't know. It's the practice squad. And he made some great plays in the preseason. Eric Washington, the defensive coordinator, in this episode, praised him. He's like, the the plays Colbert made in this last preseason game is something we really need to consider. So the defensive coordinator seemed to like him. The general manager loves him. And there's no spot on the practice squad? I get there's no spot on the 53. Totally understand that. But two two safeties on the practice squad, and neither one's Colbert. And they ended up cutting one of the other safeties. Now it's just Tavarius Moore on the practice squad. But, like, still, not... Not Colbert, despite how much you love him. I just, that's one that's always going to be a little bit unanswered for me here, but still a cool scene nonetheless. Some other cool moments in this in this episode. Uh, they talked to Brett Rippon when they cut him as the third string quarterback and said, hey, we want you back on our practice squad. If you make it out, we want to bring you back on the practice squad. And right away I thought, wait a minute, Austin Reed's on the practice squad. He's the practice squad quarterback. Of course, Brett Rippon ended up signing with the Minnesota Vikings, so the Bears couldn't put ripping on the practice squad, but clearly Reed on the squad was not plan A. And I don't know if Reed knew that. I mean, I think he did based on the way they talked to about him, but like, it's just kind of funny that that gets confirmed to all of us on hard knocks. They're like, oh yeah, actually, sorry, they didn't, you weren't their first choice to stick around. They did want ripping on the practice squad, but Reed will take you because we didn't get the guy that we actually wanted. Uh, The quarterback's coach, Kerry Joseph had a nice quote there where he said, you know, I'm not concerned about us having two rookies and a second year guy in our quarterback room with it being Caleb and Austin Reed as the two rookies and then uh, Tyson Bajan as the second year guy because of their maturity. He feels like Bajan's really mature for a second year quarterback. Caleb is super mature for a rookie quarterback. They play and act like they're more experienced in the NFL than they actually are. So they feel really good about that room without Britt Rippon now going to the Minnesota Vikings. There was a cool sequence where they they kind of did like this supercut of Caleb Williams' practice plays where he dropped back to pass and then he'd throw it and the receiver would catch it. And then as soon as the camera moves back to the original line of scrimmage, it would like seamlessly flow into the next play where all the players are reset. But you don't even see like an edit. It was a really cool visual sequence of just like five or six Caleb Williams drop back, throw, catch, drop back, throw, catch, drop back, throw, catch. But it was very early in the episode, long before we got to any of the cut down stuff. And... If you're an astute viewer of Hard Knocks, this is a good Easter egg for how closely do you watch Hard Knocks? And maybe I'm just too much of a Bears nerd to notice that I notice this kind of stuff. So it's not a competition here. Those clips of Caleb Williams throwing early in this episode before cutdowns, those clips were taken after roster cutdowns. Those clips were all only players on the 53-man roster, none of the other 90-man players here. And the giveaway was that during those clips, Caleb Williams completed a pass to a wide receiver wearing number 11. And I went, who the heck is wearing number 11 on this Bears roster? I went back and looked at the training camp roster. The only number 11 was third string quarterback Brett Rippon. Brett Rippon was not catching passes from Caleb Williams at not lining up at the wide receiver position. I double checked the 53 man roster and wide receiver DeAndre Carter changed from his preseason number that was 30 and has now that he's on the 53, has updated his number to 11, Darnell Mooney's old number. And so the only way Caleb Williams could have been throwing a pass to complete to number 11 is if that happened after cutdown days. But that clip was in the beginning of the episode, and they made it sound like it was before the Bears had cut things down, and it was just like, hey, while the Bears are cutting down rosters, Caleb Williams is working hard. 
But then they show a clip of Caleb Williams after the cutdown. It's like, gotcha. Gotcha, Hard Knocks. I see you out of chronological order taking clips from the future and trying to sell them to us like they haven't or like they haven't happened yet. Gotcha. Caught you red-handed. You got to be better on your editing there because you can't put that clip early in the episode before that player has changed his number. Absolutely, absolutely got him. A couple of the quick ones. Uh, a cool moment of Jalen Johnson asking Roman Dunze to run routes with him after practice, working on option routes. Jalen feeling like, man, I feel like I'm always wrong when guys run option routes. And drilling that for five straight plays was really cool. They had Montez Sweat working with Austin Booker, just kind of showing him like this little speed rush move. And he's like, do you ever do that speed rush in college? And Booker says, not much. Like, I, I was mostly the, using the long arm for everything. Like, he really used that length and not so much like the quick little speed stuff. So kind of a cool moment there. But also, like, Booker recognizing, like, yeah, I actually don't, didn't use all these pass rush moves. And he's learning new pass rush moves and can't just rely on the one go-to move that he went on in college. And then they had DJ Moore and his wife, girlfriend, uh, partner, I don't actually don't remember if they're married or not. I hate to mislabel this, but like DJ Moore, his partner and their daughter bought a house after he got the new contract. The daughter, who's like, you know, a toddler, gives you the tour through the house. And then at the end, the daughter uh, announces for the parents that uh, the, that the mom is pregnant and a second child is on the way. So the DJ Moore family expecting another one. That was a cool little way to announce that on Hard Knocks. And the DJ Moore says, hey, you know, like got six years on my contract. Maybe we'll, we'll ride this out, live in Chicago for a while, raise a family here and Retire a bear, maybe, and puts this little smile on. So, hey, DJ Moore wants to retire a bear, setting the stage for that early on in this process. Lots of cool smile moments, lots of cool heartwarming moments, some tear-jerking moments, and some cool football moments. That's what we wanted from Hard Knocks. That's what we wanted all season from Hard Knocks, but I'm glad we at least got the most of it in this season finale to really go out with a bang. As Hard Knocks ends, our regular season prep begins. So on tomorrow's podcast, we're going to talk to Tyler Rowland from Locked On Titans for Crossover Thursday and get all of your Tennessee Titans previewed together here so you're ready for this week one matchup. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button to the Locked On Bears podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts because that's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. If you're looking for your second listen, you can hear Tyler Rowland on Locked On NFL. Locked On NFL is now two shows every day. First, the madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your morning with a double shot of NFL Espresso. And then you can stop by the barber shop with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. And you add in the Locked On local experts from across our network to get you unprecedented NFL insight wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. It's Locked On NFL for more football talk. For more Bears talk, you got to come back to Locked On Bears tomorrow. Make us your first listen once again and get another opportunity to bear down.